Megan Rose here with Soul Work, and this video today is on the difference between spiritual awakening and kundalini awakening. In spiritual awakening, when people are saying, I'm having a spiritual awakening, usually they're experiencing a couple different things. So oftentimes people feel healing moving through their bodies, or they feel this ability to heal. They may have more psychic, intuitive revelations. They may feel like they are able to communicate with the astral plane or channel. They may see orbs. They may see sacred geometry everywhere. They may even feel deep, intense energy waves as certain events happen astrologically in the world, full moons, just really having more of an empathic awareness of the world. My handwriting is horrible, that said. So healing and energy, psychic intuitions, uh, you may even feel your like light moving through your heart or just so much love pouring out of you through your heart. And some people will consider all these types of things like I'm spiritually awakened or at some point on my path, I was kind of in the dark of all these things and then I became awakened to all these types of things. Okay, so the other thing that happens within spiritual awakening or that people consider spiritual awakening is when they start to see the difference between more of their animalistic tendencies to seeing their ego, seeing themselves clearly. Like this sentient ability that humans have to self-reference and now seeing the self-reference and how it's connected to the world or to go into like therapy deeper or to go into um, spiritual ideas in a deeper way. So this doesn't have to be a religious thing. It can be, or it can be, you know, maybe you're starting to pick up more books on how to forgive, more books on how to, you know, cultivate virtue or more books on how to be a Buddhist or meditation, like you're starting to feel called and um, aligned with certain spiritual ideals. And so, you know, you're, you're a sense, in a sense, feeling like you're awakened or that you are awakened to that part of life. Now, this is where we get into Kundalini awakening and how it's subtly different and why people who are often on my channel, what they're experiencing and why they're looking up information on Kundalini awakening versus just spiritual awakening. Um, and one thing to make note of within spiritual awakening, psychism, mediumship, those types of things, they are incredibly limited. So the intuition is actually stronger than psychism. Your intuition and building that love, wisdom, ability out and allowing wisdom and intuition to press upon your higher mind is actually a, a skill that is developed further along the path than psychism alone. Psychism is where you are working within the astral plane so you could be channeling or just bringing in ancestors and getting information that way, which is considered horizontal. And intuition is considered a vertical way where you are then connecting with your soul and the monad or spirit or uh, Christians will call spirit holy spirit. So that's another name for that. So it's actually connecting vertically instead of horizontally out into what's called the astral plane. And then the astral plane is held emotion and a lot of illusion. When you move upward, um, and upward, inward, cultivating great power in this intuitive alignment, uh, and that's what it takes in order to connect with um, beings that aren't actually masquerading as they would on the astral plane. Astral plane, you'll, you'll have um, beings masquerading, saying they are archangels, they are these Pleiadians, they are this and that, and um, that can be really deceiving on the path. So anyway, <laughs> moving over to Kundalini. 
The reason people start to seek out kundalini is because there's a purification process going on. This purification process can be really intense to mild. The more intense it is means that there's more blocks, there's more misalignment within your being, your way of life, your thought process, your emotional process, than if it's a really mild awakening. And energy moves through your chakras and then your different nadis and energy lines throughout your whole body to help clear the way for higher light, you could say like the God light to ground through you as healing. Healing not only to your own soul stream and experience, this healing impacts the entire world. To not get into that too deeply though, the purification process can have a lot of side effects that can sometimes be uncomfortable. You can have intense heat and vibration just moving through your body, especially your head or your third eye or specific chakras. You could have different energy that hits different points of your being that it um, it like causes almost like convulsions throughout your body because it's trying to move through these, these blockages. Um, anything you can think of like physically sweating, um, really this tingling, this vibrating, the shaking, uh, random kriyas or different vibrations and sounds moving through your your mouth. And some of these things may seem really odd and scary and can freak you out, especially if you're not familiar with the process or you know, you're not in a community that supports that or understands what's happening. Kundalini, like if you have this moving through your life, I think I especially see comments on YouTube where people are experiencing more intense symptoms and this isn't always the case. That is what happens when people aren't understanding what's going on and then you're searching out on YouTube, right? Like just to try to find some answers versus say someone who was deeply devoted, say on a religious path, what can happen, say like a nun as an example, the um, Christian path allows for an awakening that is very smooth and mild up to the heart chakra. And so you'll experience in these types of containers where people just have this beautiful love and devotion for Christ or the Christ process or um, God, like they just feel it just moving through their bodies. If somebody has a spiritual awakening though or, or moves into kundalini where it was just like maybe they were smoking pot and it just opened things up enough that that was able to happen or maybe they were meditating and they started going down the spiritual path or they had a ripening where you had kundalini open in a previous life which most people have um kundalini when it first awakens can be a really traumatic event in a person's first life that it happens. Doesn't have to be that way. Just uh, to really take a context here of how much density or misalignment a person is working with. And I don't say that like it's a bad or wrong thing. And I do apologize if my words like that misalignment or used to say, oh, you're really dense. I, I don't mean it that way in a way that it's negative. It's because we all are going through a certain process within all of us and we all, you know, have had where we've engaged in a lot of violence and survivalist uh, tendencies and um, just selfish means really for survival. And there was nothing wrong or bad in that. Like you don't um, chastise like the, the crow for eating a mouse or, you know, however the process is working. And so wherever you've been or wherever you are to just really come to terms with that and okay, cool. Like I'm exactly where I need to be in my life process. And, um, to know that there are tried and true processes that support your purification and things like, um, 
you know, like a lot of people when they're first having spiritual awakening and they're starting to, you know, have greater realization or go on self-help paths or go, you know, involve themselves in energy and healing and things like that are facilitative to a certain point. And when you are at this purification process, it takes more than just the consensus, consciousness, spiritual awakening garb to help totally purify and ground God through all your energy centers for the benefit of all humanity. It's, um, it's a dissolution of our ego and it impacts every single area of your life. There's not one area of your life when you're going through this purification process that is not touched by it. It's, uh, it's intense and ultimately for the highest and best good of your life path. And I, I, I do hope to communicate that, that if you are experiencing a lot of intensity within it, that um, there are things out there that you can do, that you can help to support the process. It, you're not alone where like, you're just a victim of the process. It's um, ultimately here to serve your greater good and the evolution of your being as a soul grounding into the human realm. It's, um, it's a really remarkable process. So a lot of people who have spiritual awakenings have had kundalini awakenings in past lives. And it's just not ripened at this point. Sometimes that ripens uh, just spontaneously or at your Saturn return, which happens between like the ages of 28 to 30 or from like 57 to 60. Those are big shifts uh, typically in people's lives. Um, it may not happen at all though in this lifetime. Like your lifetime right now may be to work on certain aspects of your being that if you are experiencing this purification process, you wouldn't then be concentrating on things as you need to be. So again, like no matter where you are, if you are experiencing spiritual awakening, you're not experiencing this purification aspect, uh, you're just, you're in here just kind of like figuring things out, you're, you're feeling called or intuitively led to certain paths and uh, you know, just continually trying to live a more virtuous life. I mean, that is wonderful. And to, to be in that, it's not saying that um, that you're meant to be here in this life. Because as you are doing those things, you are setting up a greater foundation for a greater um, unfoldment. Now, say you may know someone or you may be someone who has special psychic abilities or special extrasensory abilities or this is even beyond just intuitively, you may have phenomenal communication abilities beyond like what normal people have or mathematical abilities. Um, these certain things can be because in a past life, you had Kundalini and the energy process through it was able to purify up enough to your brain and your lotus, <laughs> my version of a lotus there, um, that it unlock, uh, unlocked or helped to, if you think of like alivening certain petals of your being, so there's little petals in your chakras. And when Kundalini was able to rise, sometimes it takes, um, ideally through your central channel, sometimes different practices teach people how to do it through a side channel. And through those side channels are then able to awaken certain abilities and then Kundalini comes back down and rests at the base of the spine while you're working on saying, now your life process is not linear. Like you may be working on things that are helping to open your throat center or your brow center or your survivalist tendencies or your place in the world and your ego and you know, before you can be spiritually realized, you want to be a fully self-realized person. And again, so it's like, okay, let's write this out. All right, 
right? So you're becoming a more self-realized person. So you're kind of like on the graph here, just more and more self-realized. You're understanding more of your dynamics in the world, how they impact other people, more of just how you can love and be more virtuous and how, you know, the other dynamics have been more limiting to you. Or you are also learning to be a like great business person or a, you know, a very powerful person in society. So having great personal power and um, like sexual prowess, like really being in relationship and intimacy and having money and all those things are so important for self-realization. Uh, if you think about if you weren't totally empowered in those ways, you'd be then maybe more submissive. You would be, um, you wouldn't have the willpower to go through the purification process. Um, the, the willpower and discipline that it takes to be successful, to have healthy relationships, all those things impact your spiritual journey. And uh, it, it's, it, all, it all matters and it's all important. So the point being, it's not like, oh, now I'm self-realized and then now I work on my spiritual journey. What happens is, oh, I'm, I'm on this journey of self-realization and at some point I start to become spiritually realized at the same time. Actually, if I kind of put that dot like here and then at some point they cross. I hope you get the idea. <laughs> so they start to come together and then eventually it's like uh, an embryo and an egg. Once that chick becomes so self-realized, just help me with this example here, right? Or this metaphor is so self-realized, it breaks through the egg. You no longer need that container of self to hold that development together, to support that development. So you eventually break through that sense of self to support your spiritual life, to support your spiritual being. And yeah, I hope that's facilitated. It's a cool process. It is here. It's like what you are here to do. And so wherever you are in all of this, um, keep going. You know, there's like two mistakes they say a person can make on their spiritual path. One is not getting started. The other is not finishing. Go all the way. Don't get stuck in psychism. Don't get stuck in just like thinking that energy and healing are the whole path. Don't get stuck thinking affirmations are the whole path. Don't get stuck thinking just forgiveness is the whole path. All these things are a component of the path. And then the path is even more than those. You know, so it's said that you can put the small bowls, small bowls being your psychism, small bowl being healing and energy, small bowl being self-empowerment and realization, small bowl being how you interact in the world, small bowl being working with like past lives or whatever it may be. And then the big bowl holds it all. And that's like the the soul that's you only have the big bowl that holds the smaller ones through that soul realization that eventually even past soul realization is the spirit realization you need to get from here though you don't even you can won't even comprehend spirit till you comprehend fully your soul so i hope that's helpful Cool beans. So I have a course that is coming up. Um, it should be published so soon. I keep reviewing it and reviewing it. And I just, I want it to be as facilitative and helpful for you as possible. Whether you are sp experiencing spiritual awakening or you're experiencing the purification process of Kundalini, I do have a gear towards people who are experiencing Kundalini. That said, the big hole, the big bowl holds the small bowls. So even if you are just like not experiencing that intensity or that purification process or having um, realization of that, this course will still be facilitated for you. 
and said, if you are experiencing Kundalini, there's a lot of things that I say in there that I know because you are experiencing it, that you will really take it to heart and that it will benefit you and your process. And that is the main reason of this. And, you know, I'm not anyone special on this journey. I'm not a fully realized being. I'm just another person who I feel like I have benefited so much from high quality facilitation on this path that I have I have really pushed every door of mistakes that I could. Like I just kind of like came into this world running on this path and like I just kept like running to cliffs and being like, whoa, <laughs> that was a close one. Okay, try this. And then eventually just like through my hard knocks and then just a lot of grace. Um, and when I mean grace, like just so much love from the divine, healing, and then again, spiritual teachers that have come on my path that have been so facilitative and supportive that I think the highest and best thing is only to pass these things on. And again, I hope it's supportive for you. So wishing you so many blessings. Again, I hope this was facilitative and helpful. Please let me know if it was and God bless.